It's Rob! Tony! And I'm Jeff. We're in gaming, and that's you! Hello gamers and welcome back to the end. I'm Rob, of course, or Warshack if you want to call me by my in-game name. Today we're going to be doing a deck guide on, not the RNG Master Race, that'll be soon. Uh, we're going to be doing a deck guide on Freeze Mage, like I've said in our previous Road to Legend videos uh, we were going to do. So now that we have the time to do it in between a Road to Legend video, I might as well squeeze it in there. For those of you who are unfamiliar with our deck guides, we play three ranked games. Hopefully we win all three, and I'll talk about the deck, why I do what I do, along with, um, after that, I'll talk about the individual cards within each deck, and uh, how they all kind of work together. If I happen to lose one along the way, which is kind of sad, uh, as long as it's not the first one, we have a redemption game. Actually, I might even keep the first one just due to time constraints this month, uh, but we'll see what happens. I actually like the Doomsayer and the Fat Scientist. The Frostbolt's okay if he plays the Northshire, um, but at the same time, we're looking for Cycle, um, so I really don't mind this at all from here. Normally, if we were playing like a Paladin, I might have keep the Doomsayer Frost Nova just because it's a turn five complete field clear. But since it's a Paladin, we can our uh, Priest, we can kind of uh, hold back on playing too many cards and uh, work on uh, building our hand up instead of you know worrying about the field. So we can coin out the Mad Scientist. Um, I don't think this is a good plan because we have Archmage in our hand, and the coin with Archmage is a really deadly combo. Plus, it's a Priest. We know it's going to be slow. So if we're playing against maybe a Hunter or something like that, it might have been useful. But against a Priest, you don't really have to worry about it too much. All right, we've drawn into two of our secrets so far, which is not the best thing you want to happen this early on in the game. Um, we would, I would much rather have, like, Loot Hoarders or Arcane Intellects, but whatever. You can't always get what you want. There's also going to be something I wanted to bring up, but then I forgot when I was doing our intro. But if I come back around to it, I'll, I'll talk to you guys about it. <clears throat> it's also really early in the morning again, so I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Mm. That is what I was going to talk about. So we have, well, I believe, less than 12 days until Standard Mode comes out. I think it's even 10. No. Yeah, so there's 10 days. Um... Nine. Nine days. <laughs> so, <clears throat> from nine days from when I make this video, but when this video is posted, it might even be closer to like five or six days, uh, which means all of the decks that I'm going to be like building and playing, uh, as soon as standard mode hits, they're going to be changing. So, I think this actually might be the last deck guide I do until standard mode comes out, and then I'll start making, uh, revamping all of the deck guides I've done previously uh, to update them, update them to standard mode, and then from there... Um, yeah, it'll make more sense that way. So, boy, oh boy. Well, if we played Doomsayer, I guess we would, like, ki kill the wild and then play the Doomsayer. Um, it, we really don't know what kind of priest he's playing. Um, I'm assuming Dragon? Like, Bra Dragon Priest plays Bran, but I haven't seen a Dragon Priest in a long, long time. Um, I also... Got <clears throat> I also kind of want to just smack the scientist, play the Alkalite, and then on turn 5, if he decides he wants to play like a dragon or something, then we can like Doomsayer Frost Nova. Uh, but the problem is he can Shadow Ward Pain, but most priests don't even run Shadow Ward Pain anymore. So I kind of like the Alkalite. Well, let's uh, swing into this first, and then we'll play the Alkalite. Not that this ordering particularly matters a whole bunch, but now he knows we're playing Freeze Mage. But we'll be able to draw at least two cards from this Alkalite, because like, let's say he plays a card... What would he play that's four mana that would have a battle cry besides the dragon, which will turn into like a two seven with taunt, which again the alkalite can attack. Oh no, it would be a three. It'd be a three attack because of the battle cry. It always yeah, it's a plus one attack and taunt. So it'd actually be a four six. Is someone injured? So cleric, so he's gonna swing into the alkalite. Okay. So we're gonna draw one. And then he's gonna heal it to draw one, which is perfectly fine. Wow. <laughs> what an underwhelming turn. I almost want to, uh... Hmm. Like... <laughs> oh, man, this just seems so not... Like, Doomsayer by himself seems so much better than Frost Nova Doomsayer. Just because of the situation we're in. We also want to attack with this, but we don't want him to be able to heal. Um... Wow. Do we even play the Mad Scientist here? Bring the pain. I think we can. Bring the pain. Let's attack into this, see what we draw. 
Alright. It seems fine. <clears throat> Hopefully he doesn't have shadow word paint. If he attacks a mad scientist, he does not have shadow word paint. Is someone injured? It's a very weird It's a very weird situation. Why would you play double Northshire? You have to have Shadow Ward Pain in this situation then. You literally have to. <laughs> Why would you play the other Northshire? Okay. So it wouldn't have mattered if we frosted over there. Wow, he is a uh, he's really adamant. I think we just Ice Barrier, Pink Face. <clears throat> no reason to do anything else. Blizzard is just going to enable him to... Uh... Oh, first of all, coining into Blizzard just seems bad. That Battle Cry Alive doesn't really make a significant difference unless he like, plays the guy that gives them the taunt cards. Like That's the only Battle Cry that we really care about, right? Um, him drawing was a big deal, but he had Shadow Ward Pain in his hand for a while. It wasn't a card he like, top decked from playing the Double North Shire, so that's fine. <laughs> Um, matchup against, or the matchup against Priest in this is normally favored on our behalf, just because, you know, if they, if this was, was, if this was Warrior, they could keep armoring up, but with Priests, they're capped off at that 30 health heal, so as long as he doesn't, I mean, I guess he could save his Flash heals, and, um, <clears throat> his Light of the Narus and stuff, which would be a little, uh, be kind of problematic, but for the most part, as long as we can, like, maybe get off a good Antonitis coin, and then, like, some, like, Frostbolt double Ice Lance, get, like, three Fireballs, and then from there, Alex Straza, and then he, he just can't keep up with the amount of heals that we, uh, <clears throat> we spit out. It should be fine. So this isn't okay. So he's buffed the brands, uh, the brown uh, a little, a little bit too much for us to be able to want to just leave it on the field. It's a two four, not it's two four is okay. Four eight, it's worthy of actually wanting to get rid of now. All right, so we have double blizzard. We've got fireball, frostbolt. I Antonitis is not an option yet. So we could like the problem with blizzard is he's just gonna heal his Northshires. I think we can take another uh, another roulette of six damage here. We'll still have armor left over. Uh, we don't want to blizzard until we can like ping off one of the Northshires because we just blizzard and then he um, he heals it. He draws two more and then he's at. I guess he would have to play a card, but that's fine. He, like I don't mind giving him cards as you know priest isn't very aggro oriented. It's more control oriented, which makes this matchup a little easier because of how slow Priest goes. Because we're not playing anything for them to interact to, so they don't really have, you know what I mean? Like Soul Priest Flash Heal. Flash Heal is a very, you know, offensive tempo, huge play, deal five damage for one mana. Um, but in this situation, oh stop! Oh my God, stop calling me! I'm in the middle of a video. Clear water. I don't even know who you are. Just random calls all the time, man. Hi. Would you like to know? No, I would not. I would rather not. Not at all. All right, so Doomsayer, um, a really solid card right now. Um, uh, how you'll say, um, uh, Blizzard will do just fine for um, the meantime. Frost Nova actually doesn't even look too bad because then we can Arcane Intellect on top of that. So I actually like the Arcane Intellect here. <clears throat> but if we because we arcane intellect and we do draw the doomsayer now nah, let's just blizzard yeah we couldn't play it anyway so this doesn't matter too much <sighs> and the next turn i suppose wow power word shield so he's buffing up the field quite a bit does he run double shadow word pain that'd be insanely like aggro like against aggro like, he must be, like, I don't know, it's weird. He is playing Dragon Priest, though. But most people don't run. They run, like, double double death. And then their early game, because the Northshire Cleric, the Twilight Drakes, the Twilight Guardians, uh, he even runs the Technician, um, is basically enough most of the time to be able to uh, to deal with most players. Oh, man, six damage. That's pretty good. And he's going to heal the Northshire. Oh, he heals that guy. So he doesn't really want to draw anymore, which is fine. Oh, my God. He has 11 cards in his deck, and we still have 14. That's insane. Okay, so we still don't have enough to Archmage coin 
uh, Frost Nova. Uh, we could Blizzard again and deal with these Northshires. Or we could go ahead and Intellect and see what we draw and then Frost Nova. He has six cards on the board. Mm. I almost like the Nova. There's Alexstrasza. There's another Fireball. I'm just gonna Nova this. I actually don't even mind him drawing. Because he'll overdraw. Fuck, how many cards do we have in our hand? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, thank God. Woo! I got scared there for a second. <laughs> we can actually win next turn, so we have double Fireball for all school, But we just need Ice Lances, and we need Emperor to pop. Because we know he's going to heal. So, I think the Archmage and then the uh, Frost Nova is a good play. Coin Frost Nova. Um, another solid play would be to Blizzard. But I think the Archmage coin Frost Nova is uh, pretty solid. You require my assistance. Aha! Aha! <clears throat> Next turn, Alexstrasza, and then we have, you know, a variety of different uh, direct damage spells. In Tomb, you mean, you kind of saw that coming. What the fuck? It just disappeared. <laughs> it didn't even do, like, the animation. That thing was just, like, gone. It's mine. That's my card. That's my card. All right, how much damage does he have now? He probably has enough to pop the block. Right, so this is 7, 11, 12, 13, 17, 21, yeah, 21. <sighs> we have the other block in our hand, so we have time. I don't see like Velen's Holy Novas. That's always an option. He probably just made room with the North Shires, yeah. Is that enough? That's 9, 13, 17. Wow, that was enough. Good job. I'm gonna double Holy Nova to heal. That's pretty clutch. Alright, so definitely have to ice block, that's without a doubt. Um now we can fireball frostbolt ping, right? Because this is seven. Yeah. But the only problem is if we draw into another ice block, but I'm going to assume, or an ice lance, I would assume that that's not going to happen. So we have tw 12 damage here between two fireball and then the ping, so we have 13 damage. So like a light, and then a heal is the best. So if he light, but he doesn't even play flash heal, I doubt it. They pop the block, so he doesn't play the Kezen. If he only heals here, that's definitely not enough. But he ran, like, so many cards that enabled him not to play uh, high-powered spell heals and stuff like that. Like, this, uh, the Bran is a Tekken, the uh, Blackwing Technician is even a Tekken, the uh, Entomb's a Tekken, so... I mean, you have to, like, give up on cards when you start playing a whole bunch of other Tekken cards that you normally card you mess, so you take out it, like, flash heals and stuff. Plus, he's playing Dragon Priest, which isn't really, like, known for having, you know, a whole bunch of base sort of heals. I don't even think he runs the Soul Priest, um, but he did, he did run Double Holy Nova. I probably He also probably land, make, or ran, like, maybe one or two Light Bombs, um, so. Hmm. I haven't seen a Dragon Priest in a long time, so I'm not really sure anymore, but mine definitely did not run. I don't think mine ran Bran. It might have. Yeah. I don't know. Seems so. It, 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 it makes sense, right? I know it didn't run technicians though. You must protect the one. You asked for it. All right, so we're playing against a druid. Um, Ice Barrier is going back. Alexstrasza is going back. Doomsayer is cool to keep. Uh, Frost Nova is also pretty cool to keep. So Frost Nova Doomsayer is always a great combination. But the problem with Frost Nova Doomsayer is the fact that he can just silence the Doomsayer. So I think we get rid of Frost Nova and we just keep Doomsayer. 
Well, finally, we drew Emperor Tharzan. This is a card that makes this deck a whole lot easier to play um, because of all the discounts it gives. Most of the spells in this deck, as we know, are like four and above. Besides like Frostbolt and Ice Lance, was if those get discounted, whew, hot diggity dog, you're on a you're on a roll because Ice Lance costs zero, and these can deal you know up to ten damage uh, for two of them at zero cost if you have Thalamos on the field. So also they combo well with Archmage, which is pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna play the leopard or the loot hoarder, I should say, and he's gonna know exactly what kind of deck we're playing. Uh, this deck normally Druid is favored in the Freeze Mage versus uh, 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 not aggro Druid, but mid range Druid, just because of how much pressure they can put down uh, early on. Uh, but if he's playing the Communion Druid, then that's perfectly fine with me, because we can basically just freeze his face most of the time. Okay, I actually like the Mad Scientist here instead of the... We could actually coin Novice Engineer, but again, coin's really good in this deck because of uh, the Archmage. So, always gotta save coin. If, for as long as you can, that is. If you're like on turn 5 and you have Blizzard in your hand and your opponent has a field full of like less than 2 attack creatures, of course. Silence? Okay, that makes sense. That was a good silence there. Some people will just go about and just kill it, which is not what you should do. Um, I like the Engineer, just to draw. And I suppose we also could Doomsayer here, because I'm, I'm going to assume the Druid of the Claw is coming out, and then we can coin into Emperor. So it actually seems pretty fair to do this route of, or route of action here. Because uh, he was going to have to like swipe and passive, and if he doesn't, I guess a Wrath, Double Wrath does it, or like Keeper Wrath. But it gives us the initiative to play Tharzan on with the coin. And we also have a decent amount of spells. None of them are particularly burn spells, but I mean... We've got Blizzard, we've got the Ice Barrier. He's going to swipe face, which is going to make Emperor that much better. It's a very interesting swipe. Because um, if he doesn't have two swipes, like, that was a... <laughs> that was definitely a weird play coming from him. Because I, I made it quite obvious I was playing Emperor. If he can't deal with Emperor, that's so good for us. But he'd probably be able to deal with it. Um, because we have Emperor out, playing the Alkalite, pinging it to draw um, an additional card for Emperor to discount is really big. He also could silence the Emperor, which would be sad. Um, but then that would leave room for other Doomsayer to make uh, its play with the Doomsayer Frost Nova. And then we, have no, we know he has no silence unless he wants to um, swipe Wrath it. But he already used one swipe. So, got to keep track of these things, guys. So, Force of Nature um, to clear the Emperor is really, really solid for us. Like, this is really nice. Because that's a huge part of the Druid's Burst, as we know. <clears throat> Alright, so playing the Alkalite. We'll go ahead, ping it to draw uh, an additional card. Blizzard's nice. I think we're going to uh, throw down the Barrier, um, just in case he plays Kezin Mystic. Because um, we don't attack much. Um, so if he steals that secret, it's not really a big deal, but if he steals the ice block, that's fucking huge. So, we play around the Tekton Kezin music, Mystic with the ice barrier. First step of this, we will play the ice block, but just not right now. <clears throat> we also have a lot, we have F Blizzard, Flame Strike, and, uh, the Blizzard. So we have, like, literally all of our CC. Fury Statue, looks like he's playing Silence Druid, which is pretty interesting. So we can expect like the Sun Fury or the Defender of Argus. <coughs> it says that the only card on the field, it gains the additional attack, which means if we ping this and then he can pass it, he can actually kill that. So I do not think... I think we can play the Ice Block here, and we're going to go face with this. Um, and the reason being is if we ping our Alkalite... Uh, he'll, he'll just pass up into it, and then his 7-7 seven, seven can attack. We don't want the 7-7 seven, seven to attack. So that's why we're not pinging the Alkalite. We have no other creature to play, and we don't want to Frostbolt, Ice Lance, or do anything silly like that. And so he has more cards on the board, which we then can just Blizzard or Flame Strike. So he's going to give both these guys taunt, or he's going to silence his field. So he's going to silence the 7-7, seven, seven, making it so now we can uh, ping the Alkalite. Ping. Blizzard this turn is actually looking pretty fantastic as well. We're, we're getting to the point now where we almost have enough burn in our hand that we're going to be able to kill him without the uh, Alexstrasza. So, Blizzard seems decent. Let's knock off this armor. We also probably should have pinged our Alkalite before anything just to see what we could have drawn. Uh, but that's fine. This play wouldn't have changed. So, we draw Alexstrasza, we win. 
<clears throat> or Archmage. It's funny because in this matchup, I would actually use Archmage to hit into Eerie Statue or the Watcher. He's going to heal or is he going to draw? He's going to choose to draw. Okay. He's setting up for a pretty... Oh, wow. He unsilenced... Why would he unsilence that card? Oh, yeah, because he could attack with it anyway. That makes sense. Alright, so... Blizzard, again. We could Mad Scientist. And... Yeah, let's Mad Scientist. And Blood Mage. Or do we want to save Blood Mage? Yeah, she's a good cycle. Next turn, we can go ahead and uh, Flame Strike anyway. So, that's fine. If he wants to use this passive to take the one extra damage, that's perfectly okay with me, too. Because, again, we're getting to the point where we're going to be able to burn him down even without Alexstrasza. He has not used the other swipe yet, so swipe on Mad Scientist would clear. But our Flame Strike basically kills his entire board. Force of Nature, Savage Roar. Is he just going to push the 14 here? Does he have the... The Living Roots wouldn't do it. Interesting line of play. <clears throat> hmm. I'm actually going to save the Flame Strike. Because we're going to have to draw anyway, correct? Yeah, because this Mad Scientist has to die because he has another Force of Nature, which means this, uh, this, yeah. So, let's draw first. Oh, we could have actually drew the Ice Block, that would have been really bad. We can actually Alex draws it, but if he plays Lothib, we might actually lose. Alright, so let's get this Ice Barrier out. Okay. cards in our hand. Alright, so let's draw, and then we're going to frost it to 7-3. So now we set up for lethal next turn, because we were able to draw it into the second frost bolt, so we just basically, he's not going to be able to pop our ice block this turn. We Alex Straza for 10, he's going to have to deal with Alex Straza. If he doesn't, we win, and I doubt he's going to be able to push through this. I mean, he already used one Force of Nature, which means he only has Savage Roar left. So me thinking how the other Force of Nature doesn't make sense. But having the Ice Barrier anyway, like that was a play that saves us the Flame Strike just in case we would have to use it later. Um, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. Because we have, again, the following Ice Block. And we have the Barrier up. Because if we wouldn't have killed, let's say we were Flame Strike and not killed our Mad Scientist, he could probably maybe even still pop the block. Which is bad. Popping the block is bad. Before we play Alexstrasza. We have double a block out, and then we also play Alexstrasza? That's good. That buys us at least two turns. <clears throat> Fell Reaver. Okay, that's very interesting. I must safeguard the okay, the silence doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, we can just stop him from attacking and start going face, but this seems fine. It actually ice lance the uh, the eight eight. So we have frostbolt, fireball, frostbolt. That's nine, and then ice lance is four. So that's thirteen, and ping is fifteen. Well, we know he's gonna passive. So like ice lancing this seems pretty good. Unless he silences that again with, like, a Wailing Soul. That'd be bad. BGH. Okay. Lord of Heal. Still can't pop the block. And Flame Strike would not be able to kill this Reaver unless we Frostbolt with it. That doesn't feel good. We've, we know he doesn't have the silence, so 
So using Archmage to pump out an extra Fireball seems pretty decent right now. And he used this to heal, so this seems like a pretty decent situation we're in now. As long as he doesn't have, like, the full field silence. Which, in case, we should have just Pyroblast face in the following turn. Um, Fireball, Frostbolt, Ping. Clue. Okay, so this is... And he's going to Savage Roar. Can he pop the block? We have 12. And then he has... Nine. So he's just using this to kill the Archmage. And he's actually taking quite a bit of damage to do that. Okay. Man, we're one damage off lethal. This this is kind of uh, upsetting. So I guess we just go ahead and Pyroblast face, right? There shouldn't be much he can do from here. <clears throat> Unless he has Kazan Mystic. And then he wins. No, he's just going to put me at 1 HP. <clears throat> and then next turn we can just double Fireball to win. Unless he has like Tree of Life. <laughs> that would be so sad. Uh-oh. That's kind of scary. Did he just win because of that? No. Okay. I got scared there for a second. <laughs> I was like, oh. And then I realized that we didn't need it. Uh, if we would have Embered, then we could have won because Frostbolt ping. But um, that Lothab was... Uh, he played it the best time he could, I think. I don't think there was a better time to play the Lotha, but unfortunately that's just the way it goes. Um, he wasn't able to pop the blocks prior, which was really important. We were able to just keep playing those ice blocks to survive long enough to be able to uh, pump out the damage we needed to get him low enough to deal the spell damage and stuff. Alright, got one more game, and then this will be complete. Hopefully we can win all three, that'd be fun. Okie dokie, folks. So we went against a ramp druid, which is really... No, uh, we went mid-range druid, my bad. No, we went... That was a silence druid. I don't even know what the fuck that was. It was running combo, lothab, claw, eerie statue, the sentries with silence, no wailing soul. Seemed like it was actually pretty decent. I mean, he was pretty close to beating us. Okay, so if this hunter runs flare, we lose. <clears throat> That's the way this matchup works. I don't like Thalamos... I like the loot hoarder. Frost Nova is decent. Frostbolt okay. It's good against Huffer and stuff. Yeah. This seems okay, right? Yeah. Keep the Frostbolt for early game just to take care of the board. Loot hoarder is good to draw. Power Blast is absolutely hor horrible. The Frost Fireball is actually pretty bad as well. So, Abusive Sergeant tells me coin passive. That's what you just told me there, buddy. Why would you use Abusive Sergeant like that? I guess if I was a tempo mage, that could have been bad, but I'm not. Okie dokie. And now he knows we're playing Freeze. And this actually contests this fairly well. We actually draw a card and the secret coming out doesn't really affect us whatsoever. This is why we put the frost bolt in here. We actually don't need oh my god, that ping. Ooh, that was close. That was a close one. Hey, give me that. Alright, so we'll kill this knife juggler so we get Blizzard. Um he only has four damage on the board, so we can actually just ping this. That's pretty He only has three cards. <laughs> Face hunters, boys and girls. There you go. The sad part is he could still maybe win. That's the that's the crazy part. Oh man, like the game's not even close to being over. Um, do we just draw or do we ice barrier? I think ice barrier is fine. Cause there's not like gonna be a turn five play that's gonna be a ton better than just uh, arcane and then ping the two two. Uh, like arcane into like frostbolt something like Misha. Oh wow, that's pretty good. <clears throat> uh, 
Ice block, pretty good. I'm actually going to play the Blood Mage, just because I know if he doesn't attack it, our Frost Bolt will actually kill the, the Leoc, and then we'll go ahead and just probably play another Ice Barrier or something. But he might just go face and completely ignore it. Kill Command face. This guy knows what's going on. He makes the trade here, giving our Frost Bolt pretty good uh, leverage. Alright, so Frost Bolt at Leoc. Then we'll go ahead and play the barrier. We have Alex Drazer in hand, so there's no reason to shoot the fireballs at his face yet. Like, we basically had lethal with that Frost Bolt, because double, double fireball Frost Bolt game on turn 10. Uh, but I like the Archmage. We'll bring him out next turn if he kills him. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just to kind of mitigate damage. Wow. Rocketeer. That's interesting. I haven't seen that card played in a while. Mmm. This actually puts a, puts a damper on my play last turn. I guess Frost Nova. Ping. Oh, we have Blizzard. What am I thinking? I'm retarded. <laughs> oh, man. I'm bad at this game. I guess it's been the games prior. I haven't... Oh, man. That was horrible. Jesus. That was insane, guys. That, that Blizzard was really important there. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't Blizzard. Because now we... Yeah, that was really dumb. So hopefully, does he have 10 damage? He would have 5. That means he can need, like, kill command and a charge. Yeah, that blizzard was so important for us to do it. So what if we, like, ice block, ping? What to do? What to do? Yeah, we basically have to blizzard and hopefully he doesn't... Oh, we can ice land space. True. Do you think we has that... I mean... Yeah. I'm gonna make the assumption he does. <sighs> oh man, that play was horrible, folks. Jesus. We do have double ice block, though, which is pretty nice. Okay, the Alkalite. How do we want to go about this? Defensive Alex Straza does not feel good. I wonder. Let the pain speak to me. Oh man, I think we lost because of that blizzard turn. I don't know why I used Frost Nova. I really don't. So if he takes us to one, we Alex Straza. Because we still have a Archmage as a win condition. Alsha probably eh, heal bots and not really necessary. So he takes us down to one. His weapon's gone, which is really nice. That weapon is horrifying. And does he end here? We draw one. Ideally, you don't want him to play a creature here. Like, him not playing a creature is pretty important. Okay. Alright, this is not too bad. So we basically have 15 health with another life because of Ice Block. And then we have Arc Mage with another Ice Block. So this is a Fireball right there. And then we just Fireball, Fireball, and just start going ham. Also, if this is a... No, it's a 9 drop. It makes its cast cost too, so if we get like an Emperor, we can actually re-summon the Alex Draza. <clears throat> now it's probably an explosive trap, that's right. Okay, so how much damage could we potentially do? Jeez, man. 
Okay, so Frostbolt. Ice like ice block goes down. That's seven. And Frostbolt hit twelve. That'd be eighteen. Yeah, it should in fact be game if we do it right. If this is a explosive shot. Explosive trap, we win. Bear. Wow. That's so good for him. <laughs> That's so good for him. Do we arcane intellect? Like, we definitely fireball face. That's one option. And then I believe we... I think we can loot hoarder. The reason we loot hoarder is because we can loot hoarder, attack the 3-3, ping, and then uh, fireball or pyroblast face. Okay. Unleash the hounds. He also could kill the Alexstrasza, which would be pretty good. Why does this have to be a bear trap? Fuck me. <clears throat> he wants to kill that Alexstrasza. We can still draw Frostbolt to win. Quickly. <sighs> All right. Iron Beaks to the night. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> he didn't have enough time to attack with it. Is there any way we push lethal here? Because Frost Nova does nothing. Because you can just passive. And we have no more ice blocks. So I think we have to... Hmm. Arcane. Man, these are like the worst cards. <laughs> yeah, the hunter passive is a is a win for him. I hope you like my invention. Yep. I can't do that. He wins because the hunter passive. God damn it, boys and girls. We lost because that Nova play. I'm telling you, that was it. If we could have saved the Nova, just Blizzard killed both those cards, and then we could have Nova the following turn to stop him from attacking instead of wasting all of our mana. Like, that was absolutely retarded. Like, why? I didn't even realize why would I... Oh, man. Autopilot mode, guys. All right. Well, we have one more game to go. Damn. That was such a shitty play. Why did I do that? And the second I did it, I realized it. It's just one of those things where you, like, went through the motions of playing. Like, it was just a bad play. I don't even know why I would have done that. It's just such a silly thing to do. Well, fuck me. <laughs> Warrior is the worst. Literally the worst. I'd probably rather go against a, uh, a mid-range druid. Because they don't get armor. So we keep Alexstrasza, we keep Engineer, we get rid of Fireball, or do we keep Fireball? Actually, we get rid of Fireball. We keep Alexstrasza because we basically have to win on turn, you know, 9 to 10. Um, if we don't draw what we need to, we lose. This is a decent opening hand, I'll give it that. Mad Scientist would make this a lot better, uh, but this is still okay. So this is going to be a difficult game. He's running Face Warrior. Oh, shit. Wow. All right, so we're just going to ping that down then. All right, this is actually not that bad. I mean, it's still bad because he's playing warrior and he can armor up, but it's not too bad. Just going to mitigate all damage. There's no point to 
not do that. Looks like next turn is probably like a loot hoarder ping. The passive to armor up. Alright, that makes sense. So it looks like it's a novice engineer turn. Because novice engineer can test the uh, sergeant. Well, loot hoarder is better. Because if he plays like a card with 2 HP, I know he's not going to swing the abusive sergeant in there. And if he does, we draw anyway. So it's fine. <sighs> okay. So the War Axe, he goes face, he keeps going face, not a big deal. Alright. Ice Barrier, ping, hit. I guess we could have hit Mad Scientist, that, that was a good play as well. But he's gonna want to get rid of the loot hoarder. The loot hoarder also can test other creatures he brings out. So yeah, he just attacked the loot hoarder. Oh, no, he attacked face. Wow. Okay, keep going face. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Do not give him a hunter passive or a warlock passive. <laughs> Darn. Okay. Let's swing this into here. Pass a bit. Novice Engineer Sue, so we draw. And then Mad Scientist. Doing pretty good. He only has one damage on board. That Warlock passive is pretty good. I guess I'd prefer him to have a Warlock passive than a Hunter passive. Because the Hunter passive is guaranteed damage. The Warlock passive is he sacks his health for the possibility of being able to push more damage. <sighs> so, we have no more secrets in our decks, do we? No, we do not. Hmm. Oh yeah, we still have a barrier, right? Yeah. Why did I not think we had a barrier? This should be interesting. We basically, we don't win next turn, but we Alex Straza, and then we basically win next turn. <laughs> okay, even Alex Straza, oh wow. Does he kill the Tharzan? Okay, thank you. That's one thing you did right. So we draw a Frostbolt, that's pretty good. Doomsayer is pretty sweet. So actually draw first. Hmm, do you draw again? You have a lot of cards. Yeah. <sighs> I like the Ice Block Blood Mage. I also like the Doomsayer. Can he do, what does he have, 6 damage out? So he'd have to do 13 damage with 8 mana. Um, Actually... Runs out on me. I like this a little bit more. Also, Kadamos Drill. So, like, let's say he silences the Doomsayer, then we still have that 1-1 one, one Thalamus out. That'll soak up one damage. Upgrade's pretty good. Bash, that would have been 9-10. Okay. You require my assistance. Could have played Ice Block there instead, but we freeze his uh, freeze his weapon, which is his main source of damage. So I doubt he's gonna be able to do 15 damage with just creatures on the board without using his weapon. Don't worry, loves. So he has five. Nah, 
that's not even close. Okay. And then this would be 12, to 17, to right? Yep. GG. <clears throat> Alright, so we went 3-1. and one. We lost against 100 due to me just being, being basically stupid, but this worked out fairly well. Almost rank 8 again. 8 kkk. Eight, eight, eight. <laughs> We're almost rank 8 again, so uh, we'll probably hop back on the road to Legend. Um, I think we might play some Fatigue Warrior pretty soon, so that's fun. So let's go into the deck and explain uh, some of the good little combos that we should uh, look at. Alright, so we'll go from the top. Uh, Ice Lance, this is really like, okay, remember a lot of these cards synergize really well with Archmage, so depending on like who you're going against, your starting hand is going to like change drastically. So let's say you're going against a warrior. Normally you'd never keep Alexstrasza, but I find in my personal opinion, I like keeping Alexstrasza because uh, most of the time playing warrior, they're going to be armoring up a lot if they know you're playing freeze mage because that's like literally direct counter to freeze mage is being able to just armor through your burst. Um, so basically what you mulligan is going to differ, uh, be different every game. Um, and the synergies that you're going to use between the cards is going to be different. Um, so for normally, let's say you play a priest, you use your ice lances and frost bolts combined, or comboed with your arc mage to be able to do a lot of damage, keep the fireballs. And then when they start healing up, um, you can just burst them down with two fireballs a turn. You generated three from the uh, frost bolt double ice lance. You probably added a coin in there. So you have four and then you have two in the deck. That's six fireballs plus a pyro blast. It's just uh, who you play against, obviously is going to change so and how you use the cards is going to change but in a basic sense ice lance combos well with a frost bolt make sure you combo it uh, play the frost bolt first and then the ice lance i've seen a few frost mages get the ordering backwards i don't know how you do that but you do uh the blood mage is good uh, because it makes your opponent have to, they don't have to kill it, but if they don't kill it, they can expect to take a decent amount of damage the following turn just to pump out the plus one extra spell power, which may not seem uh, like a lot, but when you combo um, anywhere between two to like four spells in one turn, it adds up. And also you draw a card, um, which is huge in this deck, as you've seen in the past, using the Loot Hoarders, the Novice Engineers, the Arcane Intellect, and the Alkalite of Pains, the cycle for those cards that you're looking for, whether it be Field Clear like Blizzard, or the Stall like the Frost Nova, um, very, very important. Uh, the Doomsayer, this is something uh, against, uh, it works really well against Paladin and Warrior because we know they don't run a whole lot of silence. So on turn five, you can combo Doomsayer with the Frost Nova and basically clear the entire board. It also works well with Zoo, but the uh, problem is with Zoo is they run at least one to two Iron Beak Owls. So in that case, maybe if you have the ability to have them fill up their field with five or six or even seven creatures, making it so they can't play the Iron Beak because their cards are frozen, so they can't even kill them off unless they Mortal Coil their own card, but most Zoo decks don't play Mortal Coil. So you could actually get pretty lucky in that situation if they overextend and then on turn five you just decimate them uh <coughs> sorry about that let me get a drink real quick i like the loot hoarder right now um instead of having two acolytes i normally used to run one loot hoarder double acolyte but i found that two loot hoarders is quite nice because having a turn two play is really really important if you're going against aggro based decks uh because these two drops force your opponent opponent to either have to use their passive um, on turn three to kill it like a loot hoarder so if you're going against say a tempo mage they're forced to ping off the two one with three mana leaving them to float one or if they don't kill it and they play like a sorcerer's apprentice on turn two and then on turn three they play the flame waker you can actually kill off the sorcerer's apprentice and then you can deal with the flame waker later it's just a really good early game card as for like let's say the alkalite of pain that only gets it's like really uh he's only really useful on turn five when you can play alkalite and ping him or like you can combo him with the frost nova and then start killing one ones or you're going against a paladin you kill silverhand recruits but a lot of the time he only has three hp and on turn three going on to your uh, opponent's turn let's say four if you're going against a druid they can play like a two drop and wrath this guy if you're playing against a uh, another mage you can have flame waker out and frost bolt him and then play another mad scientist so he dies really really easily and he only really comes into effect if you're playing decks that aren't able to deal that three damage mark like paladins and stuff like that um, against warriors they can just fire a war axe him down so uh, be careful with him. Mad Scientist is just broken. You've seen my take on him. Uh, Novice Engineer, this card, uh, you can run one or two of them. He's uh, kind of switchable with the Loot Hoarder. Uh, the, the positive of Novice Engineer, you lose one attack, but you gain the ability to draw the card right away. As we know, Loot Hoarder, you gain one attack, but you lose the ability to get the card right away because it's a death rattle, which means they can silence it like we've seen in the Hunter video, or the not Hunter video, but the Hunter match we played earlier. Um, so it's just your take on whether you want the card now or later. Obviously, 
earlier in the game loot hoarders better because he has more attack and you probably couldn't play that card anyway right away later in the game novice engineer is better because on turn let's say seven or eight and you're looking for another arcane intellect to combo with that turn to draw more cards novice engineer is better uh, arcane intellect not really a lot to say there it's just draw two cards great turn three play Frost Nova, we've seen why this good. It stalls the game and combos really well with the Archmage and or the Doom Guard or Doomsayer. Uh, Ice Barrier is basically your antique heal bot that costs three mana. <laughs> uh, Ice Block, uh, amazing card. I don't think this deck would work anywhere near as good if it didn't have the Ice Block. The Acolyte of Pain, we've been while we're running one of these. The double Fireball is basically a staple. This is your burn. The double Blizzard instead of uh, the two Blizzards. Um, Remember, it freezes your opponent, which allows you to stall for another turn as Flame Strike only does four damage, but doesn't stop them from attacking. So this is why you basically run two Blizzards and one Flame Strike. It's also the Blizzard combo as well with the Ice Lance, um, if you need to uh, be able to kill one of his bigger creatures. The Tharzan discounts everything in your hand by one, making it so you can combo more spells together in one turn to deal as much damage as possible. Uh, we've explained the Flame Strike, the Archmage. I shouldn't really have to explain why this guy is good if you're going second or whatnot. Keep the coin. Uh, if for as long as you can to combo with the Archmage, so maybe on turn 7 or 8, you can Archmage coin into, you know, a Frost Nova, and, uh, Frost Bolt, Double Ice Lance, stuff like that. Alex Draza, not even going to explain this, and the Pyro Blast is the ability to take your opponent, um, uh, down 10 damage for 10 mana it is a, a heavy cost because most of the time double fireball does 12 and then a ping does 13 so it's not the best bang for your buck in regards to damage versus mana cost but it is a really powerful spell like let's say you don't you're just not able to set up that double fireball frost bolt you don't draw into tharzan you can't you know combo well because you didn't get the emperor the pyroblast is just a solid high amount of damage and um, hopefully they don't have a counter spell <laughs> so with that said hopefully you've enjoyed our freeze mage deck guide if you have any comments questions or concerns or if i happen to leave something out or i made a misplay somewhere along the line leave a leave me a comment in the section below i look over them and i really enjoy reading them as we've been getting more and more and uh, all the feedback is uh, like i said very interesting and i uh, look forward to reading it surprisingly uh some youtubers will be like oh these comments are so annoying people are so bad blah blah and it's just like why are they bad they're people that are watching your videos that are trying to interact with you dude um so anyway as always i'm warshak and happy whatever the hell day it is